Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with uh, another look at MuseScore 4 in film scoring. Uh, and in particular, we're looking today at the capabilities that MuseScore 4 has to create realistic mock-ups using uh, tool sets that you may be avoiding or just not be thinking about. Uh, and specifically, we're talking about the uh, the classic sound font layers that are in MuseScore 4. Now, as of now, MuseScore 4 is developing its various capabilities uh, as we have a new play engine and a new uh, sound sample set uh, and some uh, AI-driven capabilities there for uh, uh, creating realistic mock-ups. Um, and some of those features are being worked on. Some of them are incomplete. Some features that we want to have are missing. Um, in particular, as we've talked about before, using uh, MuseScore 4 for film score is a little bit tedious in that we don't have uh, uh, the ability to sync to picture. We don't have MIDI timecode output or a video player of any kind. Um, it, the program used to have MIDI timecode sync capability, but in the uh, update to uh, MuseScore 4, we have lost that. I don't know what's going on in that arena. I have not heard anything about development on that particular feature, uh, but it is a very much desired feature uh, for this kind of work. Um, however, we do have a lot of development going on in playback. And um, what I want to show you, though, is what we can do with what exists in spite of some missing features. So I actually have a film score project open here. This is a, I cannot show you the film uh, video because uh, it is in production and I don't have the rights to show that to you here. Uh, at some point, you will be able to see it um, either screened or in a reel later on with some examples of uh, music with it. Uh, but I can show you the music from the project itself. So this is a um, live action, uh, uh, spiritual ghost story, kind of a psychological drama. And uh, this is a particularly kind of uh, tense spiritual scene. And um, I'll play the uh, actual file uh, for you here, the, the sequence from the movie, and then we'll look at the actual MuseScore 4 project file so you can see how these sounds are being accomplished. So let's take a listen.
Okay, so that's the entire cue. Um, we have here some uh, orchestral instruments, and then and then there's a, a, a sort of synth drone uh, that comes in over here. And what 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 this uh, purpose is serving is that there's actually a chant, a singing that is going on in the scene, and this is just laying down the tonal foundation of that singing. So it's droning kind of the root tones. Uh, uh, to support what's going on there. So up until that point, we have some very understated musical gestures for the underscore. There's no thematic material going on here. Um, the, the director very specifically did not want thematic material really very much in the entire picture. Uh, it was after uh, musical gestures that were very soft and subtle and understated, um, kind of verging on the weird um, in, in terms of style, uh, but also wanted the sounds to be fairly organic. We weren't going after all synth sounds, even though there's a synth drone over here. Uh, all of the hybrid nature of it, the synth nature of it, he wanted things to feel like it came from a real thing, not from an electronic item of some sort. So uh, those are the, the, the limitation on the synth sounds that we're using in this. Uh, so let's look at this little particular, this particular part of the cue, in MuseScore. So here we have uh, the project and you can see some uh, elements uh, in the uh, setup. We have essentially a string quartet with a contrabass section. Um, I have the contrabasses down here doubled with a sub bass, a warm synthesizer sub bass directly from MuseScore 4 down in the bottom. Everything that the contrabasses play, the sub bass plays an octave lower. And then I have um, uh, also above here, we have uh, a cassonet line. And you'll notice that there's a couple of piano uh, tracks up here that I have. I'm not using them in this cue, uh, but I do use the uh, piano tracks uh, in, in other cues. So it's just become part of the common template for certain parts of the score. And it shows up in this file, even though it's not being utilized. Another thing that you'll see here is that I have violins, violin uh, two, viola, uh, uh, celli, or cello. It's actually, these are solo instruments in spite of what it says. And then of course the contrabass. Um, but I also have other versions of the same instrument and it says violin one effects, violin two effects, viola two, uh, another set of uh, celli, and then uh, another set of contrabass. These are actually using the classic uh, MuseScore sounds. These are using the MS Basic sounds. And the reason why I have uh, these other iterations of each instrument using the solo MS Basic sound is because right now the Glissandi feature works on those sounds, but the Glissandi feature does not work on the um, the new sounds on the Muse Sounds sound set. Uh, they have not recorded samples for those features and they've not integrated them completely so that they're usable. And what I'm showing you here is that you can very passably use the um, uh, MS Basic sounds with the Muse sounds to achieve features that may be absent. Uh, and do it in a convincing way. I think one of the things you want to do is be extremely subtle with dynamics um, and try to bleed one sound into the next. Uh, so you see that I've got uh, very soft trills going on in these solo Muse sounds sounds, very low dynamics to get kind of the breathiness of the samples that are in there. And then I introduce my uh, Muse sounds uh, uh, classic sounds rather than the MS classic sounds also at a very small dynamic but also look at the way they're mixed I've got the MS basic sounds mixed uh, quite low with in comparison so this is violin one MS basic is about half the mix volume of the uh, violin one muse sound sound I also have the reverb cranked up quite a bit for those sounds as well so in a very understated way in a very soft way, I kind of bleed these sounds in. And I also layer them on occasion. Um, so sometimes I'll have an attack happening uh, here on the Muse sound sounds for the uh, uh, triple piano um, uh, tremolo that comes in here. 
comes in at the attack, the release, I should say, attack of the glissandi sound. And these are set to portamento glissandi. And I, I can even set multiple glissandi here, going to two different notes. And the way this is done is by layering, if I uh, just zoom in here, it's by layering uh, layer one and layer two on the same note, and each one goes to its perspective, a uh, respective um, uh, tone that it is going to be morphing into using that glissandi feature. So listen to this now in context just within MuseScore. And really, I've changed nothing about it. I have actually done no additional post-processing on this other than normalization uh, And when I brought this into the project file. And it seems to work quite well. Okay, and you get the idea. You can see I'm also using the um, uh, newly added feature on the last release, the chromatic alterations for uh, trills. Uh, that is now in there, and you can just indicate exactly what type of trill you want to be using, and it will automatically apply that uh, in the setting. So um, now one gripe that I know I'm going to hear about this is, yeah, but it's so much work, and look at how you're goofing around with the notation, and it looks so ugly. Well, remember, this is not intended for playback uh, from players. This is not going to be going to notation. I'm, I am mocking up. And uh, I would also argue that what you see here in terms of all of the detail, um, kind of goofy hackiness of this, it's really no different at all than what we do in a digital audio workstation with MIDI data. We do the exact same kind of programming. The block that I think some people have that are working out of DAW and then wanting to have DAW capability, MIDI entry date capability and control within MuseScore 4, and I, and I think that would be great if we had that, um, but it isn't there now. And I think one of the problems that people have with that is really coming out of a conceptual uh, roadblock for them, but it's just a conceptual one because really there is no increase in effort in doing this than there would be in working from digital audio workstation MIDI entry, you would still be programming various MIDI controllers uh, one by one or using various controller interfaces in order to accomplish the same exact thing. Even if you had good samples that had glissandi, you would still have to mix them together and make them so that they appear in the same space. And that would require a lot of effort in terms of uh, mix buses, uh, and also various kinds of MIDI data programming to get the transitions to work properly. So uh, I really see no loss whatsoever in using MuseScore in this way uh, for the time being. And you get a very, very, very realistic uh, passable mock-up with really not a lot of effort. I, I didn't really have to overthink this. Um, I'm just using very low dynamics to get those samples. Um, I'm mixing in appropriate levels so that uh, things blend together and using the reverb uh, features that are now in there uh, and then just applying the controls that already exist uh, within these various kinds of um, uh, uh, ornaments and glissandi patterns that exist inside of MuseScore uh, for, for the MS Basic sounds, which are already very good. I mean, the MS Basic sounds, I, I, I mean, they're not believable, but I think when used in this way, some of those sounds are a very, very good complement and addition to the Muse 
sounds that we now have. I think you can really augment, particularly in the percussion sounds, uh, some of the synthesizer sounds, uh, a few of the woodwind sounds and the string sounds in particular. The brass sounds really lack. A lot of the brass sounds, though, you can use for synthesizer sounds or you could use for organ type sounds, I think, are very useful. Uh, same with the woodwinds as well for synthesizer and organ sounds. You can augment your organ palette just by using these other instrument sounds as organ sounds um, in association with other types of synthesizer or organ sounds that you have in there as well. So a lot of a lot of use in there with the MS Basic sounds as a complement and an addition, a library, additional library to the um, use sounds that we now have. So that's my um, uh, little experiment. Seems to be going well. Uh, I haven't had to really tweak a lot. I just kind of conceptually think about what I want to do when I put it in, and it seems to be working very well. So uh, again, use of dynamics and crescendo, hairpin crescendo, decrescendo, also very valuable. Uh, these do apply to the glissandi in the middle of the glissandi, uh, so that's another good uh, element of control that we do have uh, in Muse Score 4 that can help us to accomplish that kind of DAW level control that we otherwise would be using with MIDI entry directly from notation. For those of you that uh, are, are literate in notation and like to operate from notation, uh, there is a very strong use here uh, to be had in Muse Score 4. So anyway, good luck with that and happy composing and happy mixing.